For this episode, we shall take up the generally accepted accounting principles and some of its differences with the International Financial Reporting Standards or IFRS. Generally accepted accounting principles or GAAP, in short, refers to accounting principles, standards, and procedures, issued by the Financial Accounting Standards Board, that are commonly accepted ways of recording and reporting accounting information. Public companies in the United States must follow GAAP when their accountants compile their financial statements. GAAP aims to improve the clarity, consistency, and comparability of the communication of financial information. Internationally, the equivalent to GAAP in the United States is referred to as International Financial Reporting Standards, IFRS. IFRS is followed in over 120 countries, including those in the European Union. The 10 generally accepted accounting principles are regularity, consistency, sincerity, permanence, non-compensation, prudence, continuity, periodicity, full disclosure, utmost good faith. For our better appreciation, in this episode, we shall take them up individually by defining them and giving examples to some. First in our list is Number 1. Principle of Regularity. This concept presupposes or assumes that the accountant has complied with GAAP rules and regulations as a standard. Number 2. Principle of Consistency. This means that accountants are expected to apply consistently the same standard throughout the reporting process, from one period to the next for comparability purposes. In case of any change or update in the standards, the same should be fully disclosed in the footnotes to the financial statements. Number 3. Principle of Sincerity. This means that accountants must provide an accurate and unbiased depiction of the financial situation of a business. Number 4. Principle of Permanence of Methods. This means that there is permanence in applying the procedures and standards used in financial reporting for comparability purposes. For example, the accrual method when used at the start of the business should be used all throughout the life of the business. Number 5. Principle of Non-Compensation. This means that there should be full disclosure of financial information both negative and positive. This should be achieved without compensating debt by an asset or revenues by an expense. Number 6. Principle of Prudence. This means that the financial data representation should be based on facts or well-informed judgment and not on speculation or guesswork. Number 7. Principle of Continuity. This means that it is assumed that the business will continue its operation in the foreseeable future or closure of the business is not in sight. Number 8. Principle of Periodicity. This means that entries are time-bound or should be reported in their appropriate period. An example is revenues should be reported in the accounting period the goods is delivered or the service is rendered to the customer and the same holds true to the corresponding expense that goes with it. Thus period covered is required in the headings of financial statements. Number 9. Principle of full disclosure. The accountants must strive to fully disclose all financial data and information in financial reports. This means that both negative and positive information must be reported. Number 10. Principle of utmost good faith. This means that it is assumed that there is utmost good faith or honesty among parties in the transactions. Why is there a need to comply with GAAP? If a corporation's stock is publicly traded in the U.S., its financial statements must adhere to rules established by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC. The SEC requires that publicly traded companies in the U.S. regularly file GAAP-compliant financial statements in order to remain publicly listed on the stock exchanges. GAAP compliance is ensured through an appropriate auditor's opinion, resulting from an external audit by a certified public accounting firm. Although it is not required for non-publicly traded companies, GAAP is viewed favorably by lenders and creditors. Most financial institutions will require annual GAAP-compliant financial statements as a part of their debt covenants when issuing business loans. As a result, most companies in the United States do follow GAAP. GAAP versus IFRS GAAP is focused on the accounting and financial reporting of U.S. companies. The Financial Accounting Standards Board, FASB, an independent nonprofit organization, is responsible for establishing these accounting and financial reporting standards.
The international alternative to GAAP is the International Financial Reporting Standards IFRS, set by the International Accounting Standards Board IASB. The IASB and the FASB have been working on the convergence of IFRS and GAAP since 2002. Some differences that still exist between GAAP and IFRS accounting rules include, number one last in first out inventory, while GAAP allows companies to use the last in first out as an inventory cost method, it is prohibited under IFRS. Number two research and development costs, these costs are to be charged to expense as they are incurred under GAAP. Under IFRS, the costs can be capitalized and amortized over multiple periods if certain conditions are met. Number 3 Reversing write-downs, GAAP specifies that the amount of write-down of an inventory or fixed asset cannot be reversed if the market value of the asset subsequently increases. The write-down can be reversed under IFRS.